mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear the account of the temptation of Jesus according to St. Mark. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days being tempted by Satan. Thus far, our text. Every day, we also are under temptation. We're at war with ourselves, with the sinful world, with that deceptive devil. As Luther taught us to sing, with might of ours can not be done. Soon were our loss effected. In other words, on our own, we are doomed, destined to fail. But for us fights the valiant one, whom God himself elected. You are, you are not alone in your battle. Fresh from his baptism at the Jordan, Jesus was driven out by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, to stand in our place, and to overcome what we are unable to do. He comes to do what Adam and Eve failed to do, to recognize and resist the temptations to sin. They only had one commandment. Don't eat of that forbidden fruit. And that old cunning evil foe, the devil, managed to convince Adam and Eve that God's commandments weren't all that important. The first Adam brought sin into the world. And thus death came into the world because of sin. Therefore God has sent Jesus to be the new and greater Adam. The one who will come to conquer the power of sin, death, and the devil. By his own temptation, we are assured that Jesus knows temptation. He knows what we go through each and every day of our lives. Even better, he endures it without a single sin. He never stepped in the trap that the devil set for him. Now Mark doesn't record the details of the temptation like Matthew or, or Luke do in their Gospels. Because I think he's interested in simply getting to the point, in getting to the good news. Jesus wins for you. As the new Adam, he conquers the devil's best attempts to get him to stumble and fall into his trap. And now maybe even best of all, he gives you the victory. The victory that gives you and me new life, new hope in him. He gives us a new Adam that is equipped to conquer what the old Adam, that is our old sinful flesh. Well, Cack is a reminder here that the old Adam is that which, that sinfulness that we have inherited from our parents all the way back through the generations to Adam and Eve. That corruption that exists in our lives, we, that we know, don't know God, we certainly don't know His salvation for us in Christ. Jesus gives us new hope, gives us that new Adam that helps conquer the old sinful flesh, the old Adam that so easily and willingly falls for the temptations of the world and the devil around us. We receive that victory in our baptism. By God's word, we are born again through the water and the spirit. And our new Adam arises and our life in Christ begins. But where life in Christ begins, so also does the conflict with the devil. Just look at what happens with Jesus right after his baptism. And make no mistake about it, St. Mark says it happens right away. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. Mark records that he's, he's out in the wilderness. He's way out. He's remote, away from any sort of civilization, away from any sort of structure, food. It was a lonely, desolate place. 
place where Jesus is that proverbial sitting duck with a great big old target on him that the devil sees, ah, now is the time. Now is the occasion to see if I can get God to stumble. Jesus' baptism was the first slap in the face, if you will, to the old evil foe, and he don't like it. With deep guile and great might, he begins his work against the new ministry that God has given Jesus to do. He tempts Jesus, but he fails. Christ is victorious. So now the devil turns from tempting the good shepherd to attacking the sheep. I think about that just about every time that I, in the stead of Christ, get to baptize someone. Because to be baptized into Christ means to slap a big old target on the heart, in the shape of a cross, no less. And telling the devil, it's time to go. You have no place in this person's life anymore. And I know full well that it's a slap in the face. And that old evil foe, he's just waiting, watching, probably, looking for an opportunity to set a trap for someone to fall into, to lure the little lamb away from God and his love. So now Satan assaults us every chance he gets. Satan comes and whispers to us, does God really love you? Does baptism really save you? Oh, come on. You know lots of people that are baptized and bear no evidence of being a Christian. Not in the way they talk, not in the way they act, not in the things that they do. Does baptism really have any power? And if baptism doesn't really have any power, does God also fail you? Power of the evil one. The lies he can tell. The temptations he presents to create doubt and despair. And shame on you, shame on me. When we realize that we have not lived up to the expectations God has for us as baptized children of his kingdom. We fall for temptation. We get stuck in the trap. We sin. We satisfy that old Adam inside each one of us. Her epistle lesson talks about the weakness of our own flesh. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. You see how big a deal sin is? How powerful it is? It can start small, like a parasite in our own bodies. It starts small with an innocent, flirtatious look beer after work, a little recreational drug use, a little roll of the dice, a little Google search. The desire to satisfy the old Adam. And when the old Adam likes what he sees or likes the feeling that he gets, sin is born. And it grows if left unchecked. It gets bigger and stronger and harder to control. And when it's fully grown, old Adam's appetite for that sin will crush you physically, spiritually. And you'll be dead to God and rot in hell for eternity. We cannot underestimate the power of sin. We cannot underestimate the temptations and the power of the devil. He tempts us relentlessly He's looking to get us caught in even the tiniest little trap. Trying to inject those little parasites into our soul. 
trying to get us to give up on God, to be eaten up from the inside. But thanks be to God that he does not let the devil reign like that. Thanks be to God that in our baptism, that in his all-powerful word, we still have hope and life from God. God is faithful to his promises. He can never leave us or forsake us, though we ourselves may run away off into our own wilderness for a time. Might be years, might be decades. Maybe some of you fit into that category. Some of you have held on to your faith dearly throughout your lives, and some, they will wander. And yet, today rejoice that you are here, gathered by the Holy Spirit to be fed with the Word of God, to be fed with His Holy Supper. You hear the voice of Jesus proclaiming the gospel of God, <clears throat> proclaiming that the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, and it's for you. Some of you are looking forward to baseball starting this week, I'm sure. Spring training. It's Lent is that time of spring training for the Christian where we remind ourselves of the holy commands of God and also the power that God gives us to tell the devil, you know what? It's time for you to go. I am a baptized child of God. Nothing you can do can change that. Nothing we do can change that. Do you think the devil likes hearing that? Oh no. No, that's another slap in the face to the old evil foe and he goes off sulking. And we'll try to set a different trap later on. How can we puny little sheep say such things? That's the power of Christ and his life in you. Jesus is the new and greater Adam and has put Satan in his place by his baptism, by his suffering, by his death, by his resurrection. And he's going to keep Satan in his place for you and for me. Today and throughout our lives, as Jesus leads us through the trials, through the tribulations, through the temptations that we're going to have in this world. The devil doesn't like setting just one trap. He's got thousands of them. Be mindful, dear Christian, and be hopeful, dear redeemed by Christ, that no matter what traps we get stuck in, our Lord will release us from them. Not because we've earned it or deserved it, but because God is gracious and merciful and loves to forgive, loves to bless, loves to free you from the snares of the world around us. Take heart, dear people of God, for the new Adam continues to fight and conquer the old evil foe. In him you are forgiven. In him the victory has been won, and the kingdom ours. For Jesus' sake, amen.